Yo. Happy Sunday. Hope they're all well. Welcome to the We Are Always Better Than Yesterday interview sessions um, with me, Ryan Hartley. And here we are for episode 38. Now, let me just send some invites and get people joining our conversation. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you for catching up on replay. Thank you for catching up on the podcast. Hope this um, provides you a great source of inspiration. And um, once I've just sent a couple of invites, I will then just get on with it and explain a little bit about what these interview sessions are and introduce my guest. So hope that we're well. Hope we've had a great weekend. I was thinking that I might just do the live with these on. Um, I don't know whether you saw my Instagram story, but I had a very busy day, busy weekend with my uh, Sarsen Club brothers. So we went up to um, Grand Lodge in London and we uh, had a very special day with our brothers from Essex who um, have formed their own lodge for young masons. So it was a bit of a historic day, a bit of an epic day. Um, and we celebrated in style. So it's safe to say we didn't get in till late or early, whatever the word, early, late. Um, so yeah, I'm probably just going to to wear these for the remainder of the interview just to spare the old, ah, sod it. Who cares, right? Who cares? So yeah, loads of people on. Have I got a celebrity back? I know I don't have a back. I've got red eyes. So it's good to see loads and loads of people on already. Happy days. So if this is the first Always Better Than Yesterday interview session you have joined, let me just explain in very 30 seconds. These are all about helping you understand the habits and the mindset behind successful and inspiring people. Um, I'm really curious. I love to learn about other people, love to learn what motivates people, love to learn what drives people. Um, and rather than keep all that information to myself, I'd love to be able to share that with you to help you learn and grow and be always better than yesterday yourself. So that's what these are. Episode 38, which means I've had 37 awesome people join me so far. And episode 38 is 100% no different. Um, so, yeah, Mitch, hello, my friend. I was just explaining about our wonderful day yesterday and I thought about just wearing these for the remainder of our, our show because... Um, the quality of our night is telling on my face right now. Anyway, so here we go. Episode 38. It is with my brother, my actual brother, not my Masonic brother, my actual brother, Zach Henderson. Um, Zach's a chef. Zach's been pursuing his chefing career for a number of years. I won't say too much about it because I will let him uh, introduce himself. So I'm going to bring him on now. Hopefully we are all good to go. Don't speak too loudly. Yes. Sorry, mate. Are you fragile too? Hello. Yo. What's up? You all right? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, that's bad. Coming from your brand new place in Nottingham, in your in your kitchen? Yeah, man. I was going to say, I've been off work for a week and I've still got bags under my eyes, so it's all right. <laughs> we wear them hopefully well. Do me the honour, <laughs> my, my brother, of introducing your good self to the watchers and listeners. Tell her who you are, tell them who you are and a little bit about your story. Hey, guys. So, um, I'm Zach. I say Ryan's brother. Um, been a uh, been a chef for say seven years now. Um, from the age of sixteen, uh, left school, um, went into an apprenticeship, um, and it's just been pretty full on from there. Seven years, a lot a lot of hours, a lot of hard graft. Um, yeah, and that, that's sort of it, really. It's sort of making my way up as far as I can get and not getting too ahead, far ahead of myself and yeah. uh, take, taking it as it comes and taking what I can. And yeah. Give us a sense forth. of the places you've worked and the roles that you've, um, you've had. Uh, so I started off um, when I first started at a nice little tourist restaurant pub sort of in Corsham, um, <laughs> which was a, it was an amazing place. It was a great place. Uh, the people I worked with were amazing. Uh, especially starting out, it was really cool. Um, then made a big step and moved to Wales uh, to an amazing sort of country house hotel. Um, you know, it was 
an amazing place. Mm. Uh, people that have seen photos or go check it out, Langoid Hall. Um, I was there, started sort of quite low down the ladder um, and very, very, uh, very quickly saw my progression um, and sort of climbed the ladder quite quickly, to be fair, which was, mm. it was a surprise, but I, I took it as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took it in both hands and I learned. Um, and then I have moved on to Nottingham, which I'm here now. I haven't started my job yet, which I start on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, going to a restaurant, which is quite nice. Um, so give us a sense of the kind of the, the, the roles um, within the, the kitchen, just for those of the, the, that don't know the, the structure within a, uh, a, a kitchen leadership team. Uh, okay, so you get sort of uh, apprenticeship uh, chefs, commie chefs, demi chefs. Uh, they're sort of lower down, down the sort of the ladder. Um, and then you sort of get to your chef de party, who's sort of middle of the kitchen. Um, going then to sort of senior chef de party, um, junior sous, sous chef. Um, and then you have your head chef, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, you sort of uh, senior roles from junior sous sous chef. And what role did you have chef. at Langoid? Uh, I was the sous chef there for the last two years. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, I started as a demi chef yep. and um, moved up quite quickly. As I said. Amazing, amazing. And it, you know, and it, there's so much that I want to kind of talk about because. Um, you know, I, I remember you uh, on your apprenticeship um, over at the Zim with you and Arms, and um, you know, a few few of my friends and I we used to take the mick out of you because it probably cost you more money to drive to your job than it was. You know, you're on your apprenticeship, and it was. You know, tell us a little bit about that for all those young people that are coming up, um, coming up, uh, and maybe chasing the money about it. What what did you gain from that? You know, what did you gain from um, those experiences in, as an apprentice? It's for me. It's never been about money. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's uh, this is a this is a, a, a career. This is a life for me. It's not. It's not just a, a job nine to five. Um, this is you know sort of what I want to do. So um, when when you're working you know seventy eighty hours a week and you're earning two something an hour, it's <laughs> am I still there? You are now, yeah. Sorry, I pressed something else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, so when 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 you first start and you're in the kitchen, you know you're peeling potatoes, you're, you're mm-hmm. prepping vegetables, and um, it's all about sort of looking around and looking at what you can see. It's yeah. it's not about what you actually do. It's about what you can pick up with you know looking and seeing things. And yeah, earning that two pound sixty odd an hour was was nothing to me. So it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and like I say, Mum, it did cost you a lot of fuel. And I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mum used to take you to <laughs> probably this is before you could drive yourself as well. I guess, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like, you know. Would you describe yourself as someone that is doing what they love to do? Yes. Yes. I I, I would I wouldn't be doing this if I, if I yeah. didn't love it. It's it's uh you know you wouldn't want to be there from eight o'clock in the morning till. Yeah. 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, doing something that you, you, you don't love. So, Is it easy? No. <laughs> Is it worth it? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, tell me about, um, I remember you came around my house and you were really nervous about the opportunity you got to, to move to Wales. Seas. I, <laughs> how old were you at that point? And uh, tell me about that kind of decision to, to move to Wales. Uh, so I... I just I turned nineteen as I just got there, so um, you know for some that's not too well. You, you get people younger than that who move away, from, you know, to university and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, that was my first. That was my first big move, move away from home, um, and it was it was scary, you know. Um, our family's quite close, mm-hmm. um, so it was hard to move away from that, um, and also to sacrifice things. Um, you know, you miss people's birthdays, you miss Christmas, you miss, mm-hmm. you miss so many things, um, which makes it even more, which makes it even more hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a sacrifice to be able to progress, progress in, you know, in my career. So mm-hmm. 
it was a it was a no brainer really as to what I was supposed to do. Did you ever have moments in the early days of wanting to come home? Yeah, you get you get you know um, you get homesick, you know. Um, it was like it was like moving to Nottingham really. I was like you just really want sort of a friendly face to stay around for the weekend. So you, <laughs> so you settle in. So you, you still get it wherever you go. Um, yeah. Whether that's just me and because we're very close family, or mm. I don't know, but yeah, it was yeah, it was it was some tough tough. So times. so moving away from home at the age of eighteen, nineteen, going into a new pressurized environment, high quality food. What sort of things did you learn about yourself in those you know those early years? Um, I learned sort of a lot of uh, self belief. Yeah. Um, I was always very doubtful of myself from. Yeah early in my career um so that's more sort of going from from Langoid Hall that you know I've sort of learnt more that I, I can do it you mm -hmm. know um mm -hmm. and not to compare myself to other people mm -hmm. and 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 the choices and the way that their life goes um because I don't really want to pressure myself onto that and it's you know I'm, I'm in control of what I want to do and where I want to go I'm not mm -hmm. really too bothered about where people go and what they've come from and so yeah it's just about me really and mm. yeah i love that what have been um you talked about learning from the people around you give me give me some examples of um you know learning from you know you've, you've been very fortunate to work with a, a great head chef who really supports and believed in you and in, in nick Brody. tell me some of the things that you've kind of learned from from his um whether his leadership or whether his um you know, the quality of his approach to his food. Tell me some of the things that you've learned from people in, in your industry. Uh, uh, Nick, Nick and his food was, you know, his food was, his food was cool. Um, amazing food. He was, he was just so relaxed about things and about, mm -hmm. you, go, you go to a lot of places that are very structured and very, this is how it's done, this is how mm -hmm. it's done, this is how it's done. But it was, especially having like a kitchen garden as well and, you know, to, to be able to learn from from him and the sort of food that he does, it's very easy. Um, but also his uh, his way of leading the kitchen as well. And um, yeah, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Tell me some stuff about like um, how do you find your your own way within you know um, your style of being a chef? Like how do you how do you how do you nurture and develop that? Like what sort of things have you learned about um, you know your style and approach? Um, to be fair, I'm, I'm probably I'm probably not you know one hundred percent like definitely one hundred percent, but I'm still quite far off on my own style of food and my own style mm -hmm. of cooking, but it's all about taking those steps to go and work in different kitchens, go and mm. see different chefs. Everyone's got their own different techniques, their own different styles. So yeah. it's, it's all about, you have to go somewhere. You, 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 it's like a sponge, really. You soak up what you can, then you move on and then you go to somewhere else. Some people like to choose the same, the same sort of route, the same sort of, uh, sort of styles. Mm. Um, you know, but people go and choose totally mm. separate styles, and it's all just sort of what works for you, really. Um, and this is really my sort of second um, proper move in the sort of yeah. fine dining, uh, fine dining uh, area. So it's still something that's quite new to me. You know, um, so what helps yeah, you? Um, what helps you learn and develop your craft? Um, I still watch people every day. Uh, I still mm. read books, even watching uh, even watching TV. Or you go outside. You know, uh, did a bit of foraging back at Langoid Hall. So mm. that's another great way to be able to just go outside and pick, you know, what you want. And uh, mm. yeah, but Instagram is it's a massive thing. Um, you you know, my whole. Instagram is just full of food and mm. not just mine. You see everyone else's and you see things on there and you think that looks quite cool. Yeah. Um, and you take that and then you change it and you adapt it to, you know, something that you yeah. want to do or 
there must be so many occasions almost on a daily basis where you fail in some either big or small way whether it be you know, you know you mess the food up or you try something new and it doesn't quite pay off you know what's your approach and what's your thoughts on on failure you just have to keep going um you know so, so many like languid hall was it was a great uh great place of freedom there was no there was no budgets that we had to stick by there was no so there was there was so there was so much freedom as you know nick would be like right, create me a dish or Mm -hmm. go and make something cool so you just you just keep going and you know if you fail you research you you see why you're failing and then mm -hmm. you do it again and then if you fail or if it's better then you just go again mm -hmm. and and nothing's ever perfect you know so it's yeah i think um in the chef environment as well for my limited knowledge of just seeing stuff on tv it's highly pressurized and um, you know, that can make or break teams. What's your kind of view and experience around great teamwork? So, um, you know, I've, I've got to be there for the guys when I, when I was there. Um, you can't really show, you, you have to be, you have to show that you're in control and, and that you, you, you know, you've got everything under control. You, otherwise they'll start to, they'll start to stress and they'll start to worry. Mm -hmm. So, it's all about being that, uh, being that sort of glue, really, that, mm -hmm. and that uh, role role model that they sort of look up to, and you know, hopefully they they want to inspire to be like as well. So, what helped you? Um, what helped you develop that confidence and and, and that awareness? Uh, get getting thrown in the deep end, I suppose. Yeah. Um, You've, you've just got to suck it up and you've just got to do it. Um, and, and you learn on the go. Um, mm. You know I mean, there's, there's no, you can't read books on how to, how to lead people. Uh, like, you can't. You can read yeah, it, but you've got to do it. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, you just have to, you have to just, to ride the road. Mm. How, um, are there any kind of times in your life where you've learned, more from a certain experience that's really shaped your approach today? Um, yeah, I, I would say going back to sort of like my first job and my first head chef, um, he was, he, he was an amazing, he was an amazing chef. Um, but I think his way of, um, his ways in the kitchen were, you know, I don't agree with them yep. any, anymore. The way I, you know, I look back at it now. Yeah. And you still, you still, sorry. Yeah, go. Cool. You know, you still, you still get kitchens that are like that and you still get kitchens that are, are like Gordon Ramsay. And mm -hmm. um, we, we had the conversation the other day in the car and um, we're in the 21st century now. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't have to be like that. We're not back in the eighties. Um, yeah, okay, there's a certain amount of stress and there's a certain amount of, um, so there's, there's still a certain amount of that sort of stuff that goes on, but mm -hmm. it's all about having to lead, lead your guys from the front. And um, mm. I think just so we're clear about that conversation we had, it's like, you know, the stereotypical Gordon Ramsay leadership of just shouting at your teammates, just shouting at them as if to say that, that kind of drives them, motivates them. And, um, and I think you think, that um, there's a different way of doing that, and just expand a little bit more on that. What do you what do you see the future of the uh, the chef industry looking like, particularly from a leadership point of view? Um, I think it definitely needs to improve. Um, you mean there's there's been a massive shortage of chefs for for quite a, quite a while now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is sort of like the money. It is the hours. It is people think it's Gordon Ramsay style. Mm -hmm. And people are, you know, they either don't want that shit mm -hmm. or they're scared. Um, so it, it needs to change in, in, in that aspect of to become more leadership uh, developed than just shouting at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What works for you, man? What, 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 in, what motivates you? Uh, the team behind me mm -hmm. um, makes me want to push forward to better them. Um, uh, 
Hi, Alice. <laughs> Just getting a wine. <laughs> um, we were talking about your leadership. Tell me some things you've learned about your leadership. Um, I, I need to sort of, well, for me, I, I like to be everyone for everyone. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I need to be their emotional support, give them advice, um, be their leader, mm-hmm. um, be their sort of release if they need it, um, and just generally be there for for mm-hmm. for them. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, that's for me. Like, and lead, leading from the front, I've always said that in my Why Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's still, it's still, you're scrubbing the floors, you're emptying the bins, you're, mm. you're just leading from the front. So you join me in our community, the We Are Always Better Yesterday community, for a, a Why Wednesday. It was a little bit different, wasn't it? Because it was a live yeah. Why Discovery, and I coached you through finding your why for the benefit of everybody else. And um, how much of that do you do you think about in terms of, um, I think you talked about like developing the next generation of um, you know, leaders in the, in the chef industry and... Now, what does that mean to you? How, how important is that? Uh, well, like I said, we've had a massive shortage of chefs and for that generation that's not coming through. Um, Why do you think that is? Like I say, the hours, mm. the pay, um, the Gordon Ramsay style. Yeah. Um, they, all, they all add up into this one thing like, shit, I'm, I'm going in. Yeah, yeah. From eight to eleven, I'm getting showered out. I'm getting paid two pound yeah. an hour. Yeah. When you can go and sit on a check out at Tesco's for yeah eight nine quid, do you know what I mean? Easier life, yeah. And I guess uh, that's the power of helping people find a passion and a purpose. And like you did, it you know they're, they're, it comes with hard times. It comes with sacrifice, but you're shaping a career and a and something you love yeah. to do. Yeah, definitely. What else have you learned over your of your journey, mate. What what are you what are you still focusing on? Um, still trying to focus on uh, getting to that standard of Michelin star. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I definitely know I'm more than capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's having the uh, it's having the balls really to just go and do it. Um, like I said, like I said earlier, my sort of self belief was never mm-hmm. never been a, a strong point of mine. What helped um, you develop that? I don't know if I, I'm still, I'm still trying to develop it. You know, um, I'm just, I'm still quite nervous about going to this new job. I'm still. Um, what well, you, know, you talked to me in your Why Wednesday around standards? You've got naturally high standards of yourself and and your work. Um, yeah. How does tell us a little bit about your standards and how that shows up? Um, so, you mean I, I don't. I don't do anything lesser than that standard. This is not good enough. I'll mm-hmm. just do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me to to be at those sort of places, you have to have that standard of that's that's up here and and that doesn't slip because you know you just won't succeed in those places. Mm-hmm. Is that um, something that's been drilled into, or you think there's been already you've already had it within you? Like, where's that come from? Uh, I think my last place of work was quite good for that. Yeah. Um, you know, we always had a we always had a high standard of what we were doing. Yep. Um, learning off other chefs that come in from higher standard places that yep. have you know come come down to where we are and learning tips and stuff off them and um, learning the way that they do things or you know. Mm. So it's all of those things, really. Yeah. But um, you talked to so for for people watching and listening. It's good for them to hear that even, you know, everyday people get lack of self-belief, confidence and stuff. What, um, what keeps you showing up then? You know, if, you, if, you lack the, if you're nervous still and you lack the self-belief sometimes, but you keep showing up, what helps you keep showing up? Because it's my life. It's what I want to do. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't really see myself doing anything else. Yeah. And it's like when I, when I get there, it's it's all gone, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's just back to back to work, and it's back to my normal self. But I'm still there. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. 
So where can people find some more of your content? Where can they see the, the food that you've been doing? Where, where can people connect with you? Uh, Instagram, uh, Zach Henderson 94 mm-hmm. Go and follow. Um, I do use Twitter, Henderson368. Um, it's just mainly my Instagram feed that's just yeah, yeah, copied yeah. onto my Twitter. Um, yeah. And then obviously on Facebook, you know? Yeah. So where can people go and... So where are you going to be working? Tell us about the new restaurant you'll be, you'll be heading to. Uh, so I'm going to be working at a place called uh, Al Camilla in uh, Nottingham. Mm-hmm. Um, chef an owner um, called Alex Bond, formerly uh, sous chef of Sat Baines, two Michelin star. Um, so it's good, you know, it's, it's quite newly opened. Mm-hmm. They've been open a year and a bit, so it's still exciting, still new. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to make a change, so it should be That's good. amazing. I love that, mate. What's, um, what is, um, what's the goal? Are you going into it open-minded or have you got certain goals in mind? Um, I don't think, because it's such a it's such a different place from where I was before. It's it's just going to be such an open mind and and take take it as it comes and yeah. And I think that way it's easier easier to learn and to progress when you go in there and you're like, oh, well, I did it this way. It's mm-hmm. okay. You show me how you, how you want it done, and I'll, and I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think it'll be just a lot easier that way. What advice would you give to? Um... You know, whether it be your 15-year-old self or whether it be, you know, that, that 15-year-old that's just thinking about leaving school and pursuing a, a career as, as a chef, what would your advice be to them? You know, what sort of things would you say would help them along their journey? I would say don't go to college. Okay. Why? Just go sh- Because you don't, you don't see the real thing in college. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I did an apprenticeship, so I was working and I went to college. And to see the difference between myself and the other people that were working and to the people that were just at college, um, it's almost like they're wrapped in cotton wool. Okay. They, they don't get introduced to the, the, the kitchen life. Mm. Learn by doing and an the experience, and yeah. You know what I mean, um, yeah, it's not all that bad. You just need you just need to to get in, get into a kitchen, get into a yeah. decent kitchen. Yeah, get get your head down and just mm. and just crack on. I think it's really important to um, for for people like us that have benefited greatly from great mentors around us to always be giving back and and um, you know, would you be taking on? Would you take on a, a mentor? Would you? You know, through the power of social media, would you mind young people connecting with you and reaching out and asking you questions about um, their journey and and getting advice from you? No, for sure. Like, I'd love that. Um, I had quite a young guy in the in the kitchen that I've just left, and yeah. um, you know what I mean. He wasn't his head wasn't always in the right place, but I tried to keep him on track and, and to, as to what he what he needed to do and. Mm. Um, yeah, so for me, that's cool. I, I love that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. Awesome. I ask this of everybody, and I'm just really curious. You I mean, you know my ethos is around being always better than yesterday and, and helping people be always better than yesterday. What does the phrase always better than yesterday mean to you? Uh, just, to, just to try and better yourself every, every single day, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, whether that be something small or whether that be something... Um, leadership driven or whether you've picked up a new technique or whether you've I mean just to keep pushing it and just to keep going even if it gets tough mm-hmm. you, you know that you know it's not going to be tough for a long time so you need to just keep going keep improving and uh, things will come for you love that I love that on Instagram I asked um, people if they had a question for you and I had one come through that said what is it like to have Ryan as your brother <laughs> that He's was pretty Hayley. awesome guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can give the real answer, mate. That no, was from Haley. No, you're cool, man. I love you. you know Me too, bro. So yeah, Haley says that was the same as hairdressing. You need to be in the environment. It's a learn on the job thing. Mum, lots yeah. of support from mum. All your hard work will pay off in the end. That's what she's hoping. So you can pay her back for all those lifts. Alice is obviously very supportive, says you're going to be amazing. 
Yeah, lots of love and support. Very proud, ma'am. Good luck. You will be fab. Uh, guys, girls, um, is there any questions you've got for Zach about his journey, about what he plans to do next? You know, jump in, ask any questions you like. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to share, Zach? Um, come and eat some food. Come and eat some food. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm no. I, I... So I um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, you know, you're just chilling out on a Sunday afternoon, and I just we had a conversation earlier, and you had like proper high quality food on the go, Yorkshire puddings, all fresh, and things like that. And it's more than a job, isn't it? Yeah, it's life, man. You know, um, yeah, I just just love cooking. Mm. Why? It's like when we were, well, it's a passion. Um, it is, it is my life. You know, what I mean, it's just mm. just something I couldn't be without. Um, yeah. Do you does your energy and do you love the fact that your energy goes into creating something, or is it? for the people and the end of it to receive it. I guess you as being a chef, you don't get to see people consume your food, would that be right? Yeah, not really, no. So what keeps you dry, What keeps you driven? What, 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 what motivates you then to make the best food possible? Um, so, you know, we're obviously always chasing uh, accolades, mm-hmm. uh, all, always chasing things like that, which in the end, you know, give us back what we put out. Mm-hmm. Um, feedback from customers, obviously, mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, the best part. Uh, back in my old place, you know, um, busy Friday, Saturday nights, you know, people, mm-hmm. people just used to be invited into the kitchen if they want to come into the kitchen and just having a nice little chit chat when mm-hmm. they come in after their meal, see how it was. And, and, you know, for me as well, if, if people say, you know, well, I wasn't really too sure on that, or it's that sort of feedback that. Because for us, I've, I had this conversation the other day with someone, I can't remember who, but for us to go out into the restaurant is a little bit more frightening for them to come into our environment. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit more relaxed that way. So we can have a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a, a decent chat about things and that mm-hmm. sort of feedback and, and just hearing, you know, they've loved the food or that's what sort of drives you. Yeah. And t- to also see the people, the people below you, you know, when they go off and they go somewhere else and they go to a better place and they do really well and it just, that's, you know, sort of propels you and to just keep being better. Love that. So guys, girls, if you um, have been inspired by this and inspired to think about your own um, journey to be better or your own journey to build your own self-belief, some self-confidence, um, hopefully Zach has said one or two things that enables you to think and reflect on that and please just do share it with someone either tag them into the comments right now or share it in the inbox you know it doesn't even have to be on your timeline if you don't want to but just make sure that it gets to that one person that needs to see it or hear it if there are young people in your family right now that are just looking to pursue a certain career in, in their life um, and uh, you know chefing and in, 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 in being a beer chef is something that someone's considering then please do get them in touch with Zach. I'm sure he would be a great mentor for them. Um, uh, Zach, you were amazing last week with a full hotel and your acting head chef food was amazing. There you go. Look, Mum's your biggest fan. Mum says, can you do some live stream cooking as well? That would be good. (laughs) As long as you don't keep calling them midget trees. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. That's amazing. Guys, girls, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out um, my brother. I'm so proud of you, my friend. Proud that I can bring you on here and and, um, just honour your journey and honour your progress. And I think, you know, I've I've always been um, inspired by the fact that you've continually pushed your comfort zones. You've continually um, pushed yourself to be better. I think, you know, it's it's such an easy place to be judged, to run away, to hide. Um, And I think what you've done is nothing short of just continually show up, better yourself um, and actually just take responsibility you know you've taken a great deal of responsibility for you your future your teammates um and it's amazing mate what you're 24 24 yeah so you're 24 mate your future's all ahead of you i wish you every success in the world at alcamilla 
Um, we are definitely coming up. Cheers, I hope dude. you've got a spare room set up. Um, yeah, yeah. And we will I hope be I, I, I hope I've done it right. I've seen a few of these, and uh, yeah, I hope I've done it right. Well, the, 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 the guys and girls watching have just dropped some comments whether you think he's done all right, because... Um, it's just I, mum. Well, actually, what you just <laughs> said earlier in your life was that you don't compare yourself to other people. So that's the response from other people is irrelevant. You, my friend, have, have more than earned a spot on episode 38 of the Always <laughs> Better Than Interview sessions. Um, and, yeah, gr best of luck, my friend. And we will be Cheers, up to dude. visit very soon. Get your first couple of weeks under your belt. Get used to what you're doing. And then we'll yeah. come up and we'll sample your food for sure. And have a few cool, beers in the process. Yeah, so sure. can you do me the honour of leaving the viewers, watchers, listeners... Um, a final thought from Zach Henderson. Oh, I put him on the spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, turn up, do your best, um, and that'll do you well. Yeah. And keep and keep going. It's like we're brothers. That's like that's like my mantra. Don't give up. Don't give up. Love that. Have a great week. Have a great yeah, first day too, on man. Wednesday. Let us know in the We Are Always Better Than Yesterday community how your first day goes. We want to show you some love. We want to show you some support. To everybody that has um, viewed, watched, listened, check this out, please do subscribe, please do share, follow, leave a review on iTunes, whatever you wish to do. I hope this has added you some value and over and out until next week. Zach, have a great week, my friend. Much love, yeah, everybody. Mate. Bye.